first, let's experiment together the SBSFU functionalities. During all this hands-on, we will use some scripts. So I will advise you to have an Explorer window open to this folder, stm 32 securews TFM scripts. First, let's talk a little bit about the TFM Nucleo L5 flash memory map. In the secure portion of the flash, we will have our SBSFU boot, our TFM application secure primary slot, that means the execution slot, and in the non-secure application in flash part, sorry, we will have the TFM application non-secure execution slot, and we've got the slot for the download of the new version of TFM Appli Secure and the new version of the Appli Non-Secure. So the first things we have to do before flashing any binaries is to configure the option byte of our device. We will set Trust Zone Enable to activate the Trust Zone fun functionality. We will set also the flash watermark to set this portion of flash as secure and this portion of flash as not secure. We will also set the sec boot address where we will boot after reset, and also the dual bank flag and the SRAM to non reset flag. Here you can see the traces of this script, so the step one, and let's do it together first. So this is my Explorer Windows, the folder STM32CQWS TFM script. Let's launch the step one script. Step one, prepare L5 for tfm.bat. You can see some warning and you can ignore them. Those warnings are here because I try to set the value that is already to the good value, so it was not modified, but nothing else. So your device is ready to uh, receive the pre-compiled version of the tfm. So the next step, we need to flash them. We have three binary to flash, the TFM appli non-secure plus its metadata, mainly the signatures. The same thing for the secure application and the SBSFU boot. You can wonder why this order, and in fact, it was the opposite order of execution. That means when I reset, I will boot on SBSFU boot that will launch the TFM appli secure, that will launch the appli non-secure. So it's a good way of working to flash them in this order. That way you ensure when you boot with the GFM SBSFU boot, all the rest of the application are here. So we will launch the step two to flash this pre-compiled version. We will check together those traces. Then we will launch the TerraTM, push the reset button, and we should see the GFM traces on the TerraTM. So I can close this window. Let's flash the pre-compiled version. First, we can see the non-secure application with its signatures, then the secure application. As you can see, it's bigger. And the last one was the TFM SBSFU boot. Good. Let's launch our TerraTerm windows. And now I will press the reset button of my board. So here are the traces. Let's have a look. Starting bootloader. Here you've got power download supported. Those traces are when your device is empty. If you press the reset again, you won't see them because it was some non-volatile counter that was not set. So they initialize all the static value. Then we've got some counter, counter three and counter four. And in fact, this reflects the version number of the secure application and the non-secure application. At this moment, none of them are installed. We are in version zero. Then we will discover that we've got something ready and we verify the signatures. This is a secure application. And we set the counter three to the value one to say, okay, we've got the secure application with the version one that is now installed. The same thing will be done for the non-secure application. Then everything is ready. Then we will jump to the secure application. 
that we'll call the non-secure application. Okay? So mainly now we are ready to play with, with all this stuff. So let's come back to the presentation. First, we will select the download secure image. So first we'll select download a new firmware image, then download a secure firmware. So here we will use the Y modem, thanks to the Terra term, and we will select a version 2 that I'll prepare for you. As you can see, there is two versions of the TFM secure, uh, secure binary sign. We've got the TFM S for secure, encrypted sign V2, and you also have the TFM secure sign V2.bin. So one version, the firmware is encrypted, and the other one, the, the firmware is not encrypted. The both are signed, for sure, but one is an encrypted version and the other one is not encrypted. You can select the one you want. I will do it with the encrypted version, but you can also uh, select the non-encrypted version. You can wonder how it works, how the SBSFU can detect if it's encrypted or not. In fact, there is a flag inside the header. And the key that is used to encrypt this firmware is embedded also in this one. And this key is also encrypted in an asymmetric uh, way. So it can be decrypted first by the SBSFU, then it can be used to decrypt the firmware. Once we will have done this, we'll see the download that is successful, and then we will trigger the installation and I will explain you the different traces. So let's come back to our application. So we decided first to download a new firmware, so I press 3. Then I want to download a secure image. So now my application is waiting on the Y modem. So I select File, Transfer, Y modem, Send. By default, you should be at the good location, which is an application TFM for workshop archive. And there you've got many binaries. So let's take the good one. We want the TFM secure encrypted sign v2.bn. You can also use, if you prefer this one, TFM sign uh, secure sign v2, but this one is not encrypted. So you will see from a functional point of view, it will finish with the same value in style and it will be a version 2. So let's take this one, I open. Download is started. So here is only everything is happened in the non secure world. We've got a non secure application, we embedded up. Uh, downloader that will push the image in the downloading slot, which is in non-secure. And now, to trigger the installation, we need to have a reset. So we can press 1 or you can press the reset button because the installation will be done by the SBSFU boot, which, have been, which will be executed at start. So let's press 1. And let's check the, together the traces. So here, first, we've got the two versions I already told you about. The secure application is still version 1, and the non-secure application is version 1. Here, we've got a swap test. That means it detects there is something in the download uh, area, and it will test it. Those traces are, in fact, the key that will be used to decrypt the firmware that is encrypted. So if you have select the non-encrypted version of the firmware, you should not have those traces. Then you verify the counter, you say, OK, it was a version 2. I was in version 1, so it's OK. I'm going to an update version, so it's allowed. If you try to downgrade, you can still flash at the same level, I mean, version 1 with a version 1. But once you have installed a version 2, you can't install any more version 1. This is the anti-rollback mechanism. Counter is OK, then you verify the signatures. Signature is OK, so it will upgrade the secondary slot. The swap type known here is just to indicate that it didn't detect uh, a new version of the non-secure application. 
because we can update the both at the same time, but I prefer here to decorrelate them. So to install it, it will erase the primary slot, so the slot of execution, it will decrypt the version, and then it will copy from the secondary slot, the downloading slot, to the execution slot. And then it will set the counter to the version two. Okay, then I will say here installation is finished, and now you go to the classical bootloader, it will check the counter, it will check the signatures of the secure application, of the non-secure application, and then jump. In this version two, I added the traces in the source code, that way you can see you are really updated the secure application. So here yeah, you've got the sum up of what I've just told you. Let's do the similar things for the non-secure application. So the principle will remain the same. You can use also an encrypted version or, not, or the unencrypted version. And we will see that we've got similar traces. Let's do it. So this time I want to download a new firmware. So tab three, the non-secure application, type three, and then file, transfer, Y modem, send, non-secure encrypted side version two. And I open. So for the moment, we've got a username, user app A, and the version two will be a user app B. So as you can see, the download is okay. I can trigger the installation. Um, as I said previously, we can download the both image and do, just do one reset to, to upgrade the both uh, image at the same time. But here I just decorate them. So this time I will press the reset button. And you've got something similar. Swap type known first, so that means it has not detected a new version of uh, a secure application, but it detects a new version of a non-secure application. Here you've got the encryption key, you verify the counter. So here we've got the secure application in version two. The non-secure application is version one. Here we upgrade the non-secure application to version two also. Then signature is okay in the downloading slot. So, okay, we just copy it and check the signatures again and install them. And now you've got a user B application. Okay, so I show you how from a functional point of view, we are able to upgrade the secure application and the non-secure application. Now I would like we experiment together the test protection menu, and meant specifically the non-secure try to access the secure, and after we will do the same with the test GFM. So here, I'm just click on enter one. So test protection, non-secure try to access to secure. And here we can see the successive resets. We've got this uh, result. So the test is okay. And let's have a bit of a look. We, we try to win one byte from the data secure at this location. And in fact, it fell, okay? And this trigger a reset, so our SBSFU is booted again. It loads the secure application that loads the non-secure application. Non-secure application don't display the usual menu because it remind or sync the variable in SRAM. It can see that it was testing this functionality and loads the next test with try to read at this location another byte. Again, a reset. Here we try to read at this address, which is a secure address for sure. Again, and each time it will give you a cumulative uh, result here. Quite simple. Now let's test the GFM. So if I press two, here it should remind you something, PSA API on the GFM secure services. So the three one are crypto one for sure. SSD for secure storage. You remember secure storage, it when you need to encrypt the data before storing them because the storage is not protected by hardware protection. Then we've got the heat 
for attestation token. Remember token, you give a value and you will receive this value concatenate with some other value of the system that will be signed. Internal trusted storage, this time we store the data inside the location that is hardware predicted, so no need to encrypt. And then some shared services. We can launch all those tests with zero. Let's do it. And you directly get the status. So encryption OK, SSD, we set and we read and we remove from the storage. For the token test or the attestation uh, token test, we give a token of 000. It concatenates with some, version, some information of the system and then sign it. Internal trusted storage and char. And you've got the cumulative result, 12 out, 12 out of 12. And that's it, mainly for this first part. So where do we stand now? We experiment together how to flash a new version or to install, sorry, a new version of the TFM Apply Secure, of the TFM Apply Non-Secure. We also experiment some service call thanks um, test embedded in the user app. So this is really the functionality that's bring by the full TFM a secure boot, but secure firmware update and secure services. Next possible engine, we will compile and debug all this stuff together. Then we can activate some uh, hardware protection, the HDP and the HDP 0.5. If you want to stop and you don't want to go on with the rest of the engine, please jump to the board cleanup slide to put your target uh, as uh, at the beginning of this engine.